aboard the QVC Local as we roll down the highways and byways of all 50 states in search of the best hometown products in the U.S. of A. Today's stop in the quest for America's best, South Dakota. Welcome, America. Spacious skies for amber waves of gray, for purple mountain majesty above the oh. oh, beautiful for spacious skies for amber waves of gray, for purple mountain majesty above the fruited plain America America God shed his grace on thee and it's an absolutely beautiful day here in the Black Hills of South Dakota from sea to shine and the QVC local presents the great state of South Dakota let's hear it There she is. She is becoming a grand old lady in her own right, our QVC local. And uh, it is my pleasure now to present Judy Kroll and Jill Bauer. Come on, guys. Thanks, Paul. Happy Memorial Hi, everybody. Day. Happy Memorial Day from us to all of you. We have a great crowd here from South Dakota, a great bunch of vendors who have brought us some most unusual products, yeah. uh, some things we haven't seen before. Are you guys as excited as I am? We sure are. What better place to be celebrating Memorial Day? I mean, when we heard the 21 gun salute and just before the broadcast, we were all singing the national anthem. I just get so choked up. <laughs> it's amazing. I, I did too, uh, but I, I also got a, a little bit, uh, a little bit miffed because um, I watched the quartet over there, and they got better vests than I got. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I'm going to get out of here and let you okay, guys Paul. tell everybody what's going to happen in All the next right. three hours. Great. We'll see you in a little bit, you Paul. Thanks, Thank Paul. you. Well, we have a wonderful lineup for you today. We have such a great variety of products, mm -hmm. and a lot of the products that you'll see today, in fact, all of them really embody not only the spirit of our 50 and 50 tour, but certainly the spirit of the whole state of South Dakota. Let us show you some of the things that we have planned for you. Of course, as soon as you see an item number, if it's something that you want, call us right away. It's going to be a great show. Enjoy yourself. Let's take a look first at a choice of giant replica coins. Now, these may look on your screen as though they're the size of a real penny or a real nickel. They're actually three and a half inches in diameter. The item number for these is L11778. The price, $31.08, and the choice is between the giant penny and the giant nickel. Also coming up in the show, we were talking about uh, a lot of the real northwestern really feeling that you find in South Dakota and look what we have for you this is the Lakota horse dance stick it's L11599 Judy and I both fell in love with this mm -hmm. not only because it's such an interesting piece but the history that dates back so many years this was really a Northwest Indian tradition and this was used by the Lakota Indians in dance ceremonies after their horse had been killed in battle or perhaps just their comrade had died after old age it's a wonderful tribute $157 is your price it's L11599 each one of those was handmade too by South Dakotans. We also have a set of five hair hookups, hair accessories. Everybody loves to have new ideas for designing, creating new things for hair looks. Well, we have five of them in silver, gold, black, red, and white, and it's $19.84. If you've always had trouble deciding how you want to put the finishing touch on just a rubber band, it's easy to do with these. L12030 is the item number, and they're available now, made in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And for those of you that enjoy taking the time to do a little bit of cake decorating, you don't like to go and have a bakery do it, you like to try your own creativity, we have the Fast Tip Cake Decorating Kit. This is L11454. This is all made in the USA, and the great thing about this particular kit, not only do you get your eight-piece plastic tip assortment, you also get a flower nail, you get eight color frosting dies, you'll get an instruction video you get a buttercream frosting recipe but the real heart of this product is the bag itself because what you have is velcro around the tip so that you can easily change tip to tip if you want to do writing and then do a border you can do it very easily no mess it's all washable nineteen dollars and ninety eight cents l11100 is a set of two key grippers 
How many times have either your hands been slippery or you have trouble because turning a key is difficult. Either you have arthritis or you just can't get in there to turn it, either a door handle for your home, for your car, for a locker at the gym. This is the key gripper that makes it easy for you to get better leverage. It's $11.64 for two of them, and it was designed by a woman who does suffer from chronic arthritis in her hands. She's delightful from Sioux Falls, and the product that she's offering are these. One of the most beautiful things, I think, in South Dakota is all the nature that you see here. And what a great way to celebrate nature than with L10998. This is our pheasant feather wreath. It's priced at $51.74. The base of this wreath is made with pine cone and peat moss. And then the ring of the wreath, as you can see, they're all the colors. That's actual regal ring neck pheasant feathers. It's absolutely gorgeous. Would be suitable really for any decor. And it measures between 17 and 18 inches in diameter. All made in South Dakota, of course, L10998. We have some humor for you right now. Are you ready for this? Toilet seat lifters. <laughs> they really work. Wait till you see this product. L11029 is the item number. And all uh, joking aside, the two toilet seat lifters are $17.12. They're very easy to put right onto the toilet seat. And it makes it easy for you to lift it up, allows you to raise and lower the seat without ever touching the actual seat. Great for people who are concerned with hygiene, for older people who have trouble, for little children who end up with dirty fingers. Instead, just teach them how to use the seat lifter. It's an ingenious idea. And it took us coming to South Dakota to find it, the toilet seat lifter. $17.12. <laughs> surprise. And also, for those of you who are teddy bear lovers, we have a wonderful limited edition teddy bear framed print for you. The artist Ingrid Arlton actually created this particular print for QVC. We're the only place you can find this. It's limited to only 650 and QVC has all of them. $48.50 is your price. This is called the sleepover. And all those little bears are having all kinds of fun. And wait till you talk with Ingrid and she tells us how she actually took her children's teddy bears and positioned them on the bed and let them have some fun with it. And then she did all all the pencil drawings. These are all the prints. 4850L11004. We're also going to be doing some barbecue because after all it's Memorial Day and you have to have a picnic and cook out so we're going to do that too. But first Paul would like to make a very special presentation to the governor. Paul? The Q card. The only card you need for quick easy ordering from QVC and all its services. Flexible payment options itemized billing, exclusive promotions, and no annual fee. To receive an application, call us at 1-800-345-1515. You're in charge with Q-Card. It is our custom, as you probably know by this time, to meet with some folks from the state everywhere we go. And this morning, or this afternoon, depending on your time zone, of course, uh, we have with us Mr. Michael Demersman. And Michael is uh, a state legislator and a member of the South Dakota Commerce Committee. Michael, thank you very much for being with us today. Paul, welcome to South Dakota from Governor Janklow and the people of South Dakota. You're in beautiful cowboy and Indian country. I hope you enjoy it. We are enjoying the heck out of it everywhere we go. Uh, the people, the scenery, it's, uh, it's tough to, to imagine any place that is more beautiful than this. It's really nice. If you finish early, I'll take you fly fishing this afternoon, Paul. <laughs> I got a couple guys in my crew that'll take you up on that faster than I will. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Well, Michael, as you know, um, we have a, a gift exchange that, uh, that has created a chain throughout the United States. And we would like to present to you uh, and to the people of South Dakota, all the people of South Dakota, from the people of Oklahoma, this bronze statue, and it is bronze and marble and it is heavy, of Will Rogers from the people of Oklahoma. And there ain't nothing more Oklahoma than Will Rogers, as you probably know. Thank you very much. Uh, the spirit of Will Rogers is very much the spirit of South Dakota. And uh, for the governor and the people, I accept it, Paul. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have a present for you, Paul. And this uh, represents some of the products, some of the products that you'll be selling here today. You'll see that there is a ringneck uh, pheasant wreath, which is very, very beautiful. And you'll see that there is a, a keepsake uh, in um, Lakota tradition. But this feather, I guarantee you, uh, is legal. It is not an eagle feather that will get you in trouble. But uh, uh, I want to give you these products uh, to extend and take to uh, the people of the state of Wyoming, Paul. And we will surely do that. And Michael, uh, on behalf of the people of Wyoming, uh, I think I can safely say thank you very much. We will deliver it uh, with great haste next Sunday. 
Thank you. Enjoy Cabo and Indian Country. We surely will. And on behalf of all the people associated with the 5050 Quest for America's Best Tour at QVC, thanks to you and everybody here. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. We want to also, uh, as we always do, say a special thanks to our partner in this venture, United Airlines, the official airline of the QVC Local and the Quest for America's Best Tour. If you see anybody wearing QVC Local shirts around uh, in your neighborhood, chances are they got there on United Airlines. And speaking of them, let's go back to, uh, oh, now see, they're going to do some eating stuff. Judy's over there. Oh, yeah. And they're going to do some eating stuff. Absolutely, one of my favorite subjects. Let me do it. A hotel up there in, uh, in, in Deadwood, don't you? Well, yes, it's the Bullock Hotel. I built it in 1895, and I built it to last, and this is her 100th year anniversary this year. Well, congratulations, sir. Who do you have with you? Who's your friend? Well, it's my good friend Theodore Roosevelt here. Hi, Teddy. Good morning. Belay, belay. It's a wonderful, wonderful day. Welcome to South Dakota. Well, thank you. A lot of folks don't know the, uh, the connection you have with South Dakota. Could you elaborate on that briefly? I certainly. Well, my uh, original trip here to South Dakota was uh, with Seth Bullock. I had to come to, uh, to Deadwood to catch a horse thief. I was an uh, assistant deputy sheriff up in Medora, North Dakota. We came in here, we became lifelong friends, and at my inauguration, Seth here led about 50 uh, cowboys down Pennsylvania Avenue, sporadically roping pedestrians and giving the Secret Service a, a great time. Give us one more bully here. Bully! Boy, he's good, isn't he? On behalf of Teddy Roosevelt and Seth Bullock, let's go back to the stage and Judy Kroll. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. <laughs> Mr. Bullock, Mr. Jefferson, Western South Dakota is richly blessed in heritage, natural beauty, natural history, and of course, some of the country's most famous Old West traditions. Well A secret. <laughs> Are really? there any preservatives or any additives in these? No. And what do we do when we get the package home? Well, of course, it's ready to heat. It ready is. Ready to heat and eat. All right, so and it's all fully cooked. Mm -hmm. All we have to do is take it out of the plastic wrap, take it out of also the pre-packaged thermos or the, uh, the cooler in which right. it comes, and stick it right on the grill or put it right in the microwave, heat it, That's and serve right. it. And you'll notice there's an awful lot of sauce on there. Mm -hmm. And it's delicious. All right, may I? Yes, you or may. Or shall I, ladies first? <laughs> I'll take one and then you may have uh -oh, some more. What do you got? got here? We got the same thing you got. <laughs> yeah, but Maybe back you're sitting there talking about it. I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Get to eat it. Don't go too far with that. Uh, this is delicious. <laughs> You've been in the business for 15 years. We've been in the business over 15 years. Uh -huh. In fact, we were the pioneers in making a pre-cooked rib and an oven-roasted pre-cooked pork for mm -hmm. sandwiches for the deli industry and also for the food service or the restaurant industry. And now, today, all your people are going to have an opportunity to get that same high, top-quality restaurant food delivered right to their door. Well, and think about it. I mean, yep. This is the time of year when you have picnics, when you have people over for a barbecue. We'll deliver this to you. It's all, it all comes in a nice, large uh, cooler. So you take it out. You put it right on the grill. You let it cook for, what, Ron, 15 minutes or so? Yeah, for the About 15 minutes. Serve it right up like this. You can put barbecue sauce on it, and it just breaks apart and melts in your mouth. In the, the barbecued uh, pork, cooked right. pork, that you were talking about for sandwiches, and maybe, if you wouldn't mind, Ken, I'll hold no, that out. People can see that they can just pile that right on a hamburger bun or right into a hot dog bun. Is there any water in this? Is it watered down, or is it just solid packed it, with meat? It's solid packed meat. And you know, it's not only for sandwiches, but if you wanted to put something different on your hot dog, mm -hmm. this works excellent. And as instead well. of a sloppy joe, you could put the, the cooked mm -hmm. pork on there. All right. It also works good as a topping over nachos. Put mm. a little melted cheese on with it. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing about it, if you take a good close look at that label, there's nothing on there but pure pork and barbecue sauce. Mm. There's no extenders, nothing artificial. All the ingredients are right on there. Cooked pork, hickory smoke flavor, a little bit of brown sugar, chili pepper, salt, pepper flavorings, barbecue sugar seasoning. <laughs> it's absolutely delicious. <laughs> All natural. Getting full yet? No, well, not yet. <laughs> but just look how many people this will feed. Well, that's right. I mean, just sitting here and, think, and counting along, it's actually uh, 10 pounds of the baby back ribs. No, excuse me, 5 pounds of the five baby back ribs, and then 5 more pounds of the cooked pork. That's right. Right. right? And actually, today, all you're doing is you're buying the ribs mm -hmm. and you're buying one tub of pork. The other tub of pork is a free gift. 
for ordering today. Very nice. It's all for fifty-seven fifty. I think Paul's out there passing out some cooked pork and some barbecue. We're getting some uh, reaction out there, Paul. What do people think of this? Well, what do you guys think of our picnic here? What do you think? I like it. Yeah, I like yeah? It. delicious. Yeah, very good. I'm tempted to buy this. <laughs> <laughs> We'll get you the number. <laughs> that seems to be the way everybody's reacted to this. We had some kids who just about knocked me over to get to the ribs just a little while ago. Uh, take it back, but save some for me, would you? We sure will, Paul. And by the way, the item number, L15628, basically heat and serve. Can we freeze this? If we're not having a barbecue the day that it arrives to our door, can we freeze this and then take it out when we're ready? It's going to come to you yeah. frozen. You just move it right into your own freezer and pull it out it out just before you're ready to use it. It just falls right off right. the bone. And there are a lot of times when there's pork that's very, very tough. This just falls right off the bone. It's just as tender as a mother's love. Uh -oh, somebody smells something I'm good out there. Oh, Look who's here. here. We saved some for you. All right. But I hope you have I some was, napkins. I was busy passing Who's got the towels? They stole mine. You need well, some towels. Hey, see you later. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Well, we've got two more of them over here, actually, all ready to cook up. Uh, and notice how clean the bones get. Oh, they do. I mean, they, look at this. Look at Paul. He's got three. Just... Yep. Oh, those, those, those were friends out there. <laughs> Skeeter you also did. have it all over your face. I know, that's okay. I don't mind. Does it, how can you eat barbecue with not getting it all over your face? And you can't do it. That's right. That's the fun part. I just have one thing to say right now before uh -huh. I go back to eating barbecue. I know it's early in the show. Mm -hmm. It's very early. Mm -hmm. But, Dad? Uh-oh. Hey, Dad. <laughs> this stuff, buy this, would you please? I'll, I'll pay you when I get home. Buy this, Dad. I think he wants some. Um, you can't pass this up. This is true South Dakota flavor. It's delicious. It's so easy. You heat, you serve, and it serves a lot of people. Look at him in the audience having it. She's, Paul's right. How can you eat pork ribs without wearing it all over your face? And usually you have to spend a lot of money in order to go to a restaurant to get this kind of flavor and also to get this kind of quantity. Over 300 of these sets have been ordered. Just as a reminder of what you're getting for $57.50, if you look down here, we have it packaged just as you'll receive it, except that we don't have the big old cooler up here. But it's a total of five pounds of the pork loin baby back ribs, and they're all fully sealed so that you can freeze them if you want to. And then there are two tubs with a total of five more pounds of the cooked barbecue pork. Absolutely delightful. If you're interested, we'll let you know when it's gone, but you need the item number, L15628. And guys, I'd shake your hands, but you'd end up with pork sauce all you know over what? you. <laughs> so Have you noticed that Ron hasn't been doing anything? I know. I don't That's know how, how you've been able to make it. Right. Just put it on and go. Well, Ken, Skeeter, Ron, thank you very much, guys. And again, congratulations. You can do a flour. You'll get the video. You'll also get a buttercream frosting recipe. Mm. And you'll also get the little plastic flour nail so that you can do roses and things. So there's our light yellow. That's very pretty. That's the light yellow. Like and what we'll do is, and what's nice about this is when you're putting it into the bag, mm -hmm. step it down, take your thumb, that I've got all that frosting can on Can I make thumb. a color here? Yes, you may. Okay. There is a brown. Take a toothpick. Is that what this is? Okay. Sure. Take a toothpick. And then what we're going to do is we're going to stick These are reusable them. bags? Yeah, a little more than that. Pardon me? These are reusable bags? Reusable bags. This bag will outlast any bag that's on the market. These are $19.98 for the whole kit. And the item number is L11454. So it takes the intimidation out of doing cake decorating. And if there you've you always go. admired the way other people can decorate cakes, for birthdays, for little children, for bridal showers and baby showers, for graduations that are coming up. If you get the cake, you pop the video into your VCR and it's a VHS format, then you can do all the swirls and the spirals and the roses and the, the, uh, the trim on the borders that you want to. And it just you know zips much, along. Do you know how much it costs now to get a decorated cake from a bakery? Have you oh. done that lately? 30, Whoa. 40 bucks. Yeah, yeah very expensive. Well, if you even want to do your own wedding cake, you can do that because yeah. that's extremely expensive. Let's change your tip and put an angel here. Okay. So what we want to do is... Oh, did you want to try some buttercream frosting? Pot? We're going to pop this tip out, open up the flap, put the angel hair thing in, 
close the velcro over and begin to go and as right. jill mentioned there are eight different tips included in this and those are all this is a little thin now because it has been hot can we put these is. into the um, dishwashing tray where our where our silverware goes or would you rather that we wash these out by hand you can wash them take a toothpick some hot water just take a toothpick and stick it inside and scrape it oh, around and then idea. it pops right out and then just run another warm water the eight different colors are comparable to food coloring whitey this is food coloring all fda approved okay um and there's christmas red christmas and sky blue lemon yellow there, right? cherry pink leaf green violet orange and brown so basically anything from sailboats okay. to Little baseballs and baseball gloves can be created anything with Anything for little boys, anything for little girls, anything yeah. for the big boys and girls, anything for anybody. The video shows that the average person, the beginner, wants to take and decorate a cake, can do this in 45 minutes and do it. My daughter did this, doing the outside, and it taught on the video, and she's 12 years old. What a fun family So what you do is you take the bag, okay. squeeze it and turn it. Squeeze all the frosting down okay. and then turn it. And then you can write on there QVC or whatever tip. I don't know what tip you have on her. I think I have the writing. This makes you talented in an instant, and close to 400 of these have already been ordered. Mm -hmm. All you do is supply the frosting ingredients and the cake mix. Right. So you make the basic cake and then use right. the, you, the decorating If you were to go out to rent the video, and by the time you bought all the, access, the accessories to go with this, you'd have over $40, plus the cake decorating classes that they're going to sell you all this other stuff that goes with it mm -hmm. that you don't really need. So by watching the video and the breaks in there, the video is very humorous, it's comical, it's entertaining. Hi, Mom. And as you can see, and I'm sure, <laughs> and I'm sure by people are wondering why the Velcro. Well, the Velcro is because you can change the tip so well. So but I also, they ask if it bleeds and if it'll come out. As you just seen, the, it doesn't bleed out of there by using the Velcro. And then you just pop changing one the in. tip. How many different designs can this we make? Fun. There's, There's a star. Well, it, out of the eight tips, you can probably do 45 different kinds of. of Close it up, and then with the Velcro, mm -hmm. and then just push it right I know. <laughs> well, that's the. That's a big old. It's get, the frosting is getting a little bit uh, warm, but. Very hot under the sun. But now you can just kind of decorate around. Sure, there you, you know, go. And then you have the, is it easy also to correct a mistake, Whitey? Okay, is that shown mis in the video? The 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 video shows. And, and a lot of your other professional you videos, frosting. all they do is they don't show you a mistake, but the video will show you how to lift off your frosting. rose. And I'll show you how to correct your, your problem by doing all that. Look at an example um, right here of about three or four different types of tips and that were used. And flowers are always so hard. Because I've are done hard. the cake decorating thing in the past. Yes, and, and those flowers are tough. They are really tough. And, and everything is done, but you know you have to take and, and do it with practice. But eventually you will be able to take and do this after this video in 45 minutes. It makes a great gift well, to get to Well, that's the nice thing daughter. about the video is because if you buy a cake decorating kit, you have paper instructions trying to teach you how to do all the different molds on this rose, and you can this. never figure it out. But with the video, you, you can sit and watch as right. somebody's and actually doing and it. In the video, but it shows no that every plate. tip will show you what you can do with the tip and how to use it on a cake and also it's, it'll just save you so much money and like my wife uh, when she needs to decorate a cake, never decorated a cake before but she has learned off of this to take and do now one for my daughter I need a cake mom tomorrow you may even you know? find that you're starting your own cake decorating business after using this product <laughs> it's item number L11454 it's the fast tip cake decorating kit you'll get the frosting dies the different tips of course the great bag and the instructional video $19.98 Whitey thank you so much well, for thank bringing you very us such much and I hope the people enjoy it that yes, like it thank absolutely. you well, thank you very much so stay on the line if you're dialing in for the cake decorating kit and we also want to remind you about a couple of other products that are are still available, including the very pretty golden finished genuine aspen leaf pendant that Judy's wearing. Over 800 of these have been ordered. $15 is your price. L11432. And this is the actual pin that I am wearing. L11642 is the item number for the sterling feather pin. Your price on that is $37.25. We had an opportunity to show you this. This is um, Eric Ketchum, one of the guys on the crew, and he's out in the middle of a prairie dog town. It's sort of one dirty dog amongst a lot of others.
Well, it's going to be time for us to start doing more a little food. bit more eating. <laughs> of course, Paul all of a sudden is sticking everywhere near the stage. <laughs> he roamed for hours, now he's back. But we have another great product for you, and again, something that is very indigenous to the Black Hills. Lisa Littlechief is our special guest for this product. Welcome to QVC, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Nice to have you back. She has a terrific idea for serving as a main dish or as a side dish, and it's called the Sioux Fry Bread Mix that you can make at home. The item number for it is L1. 11014. It's priced at $13.50, and we're going to show you, with about three or four different of the fry breads, how you can make an Indian taco for dessert, for a main meal, for a side dish, very, very simply. I need to interrupt you real quickly because we have something that we want to show, I think. Yes. We're showing Mount Rushmore and the eagles that are circling. <laughs> oh. Isn't that beautiful? They're bald eagles yeah. that are circling so up above. How patriotic. Yeah. On such a great day. Perfect timing, eagles. This has just been a perfect <laughs> day all around, I think, for everybody. So that we wanted, was something that we wanted to share with you. Yeah. Now, back to <laughs> the eating. <laughs> Tell us what comes in the mix, Lisa, and what we do as soon as we get the package home, when we open it up. Okay, what you do is you just uh, place the mix in a bowl dump the whole uh, bag in there mm -hmm. and you add two cups of water it it can be just room temperature water or cold sometimes works a little better and um, you stir it around and uh, then you just get a well floured surface and you roll out your fry bread into what looks like this and each one of these bags weighs one and a half pounds and you'll get how many fry breads out of each bag ten pieces ten pieces that's if they're plate size if um, if you just make them small just to you know you can little get like, yeah you can get about can like 20 little pieces so, so you roll it out into that yep you roll it out so it looks just like this and actually, I'm going to place one in the pan, and we'll okay. go ahead and cook it. Can we do this on the stove top if we don't have our own little oven at home? Yeah, you can just use just a skillet, mm -hmm. and uh, just make sure your uh, grease is like 350 degrees or 400. Does it okay. have to be fried? Can you bake it? No, it has to it be has fried. It has to be fried. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Great. You have all kinds of ingredients out here. Tell us what, for people who don't know, what an Indian taco is. An Indian taco is, is actually just the bread that I have here and then you just add like your meat mixture which has like kidney beans and um, taco seasoning and then you you can add whatever you'd like lettuce tomatoes onions cheese maybe like uh, black olives mm -hmm. jalapenos mm -hmm. a little bit of sour cream a little sour bit of guacamole yep. Yep. <laughs> great these yep. are kind of reminiscent if you're trying to figure out like the texture of these um, it really is very light and so we were trying to think of different ways that you could use these for dessert sort of as like a sopapilla you could do like cinnamon sugar or honey mm -hmm. you could put cherries on top which is what we have I was thinking for beef stew or like chicken a la king instead of doing rice or doing noodles you could make a, one of the fry breads and put it on top right you could wrap this up like with a instead of a pita bread put a nice chicken salad on top of this mm -hmm. chili on top with cheese would be great oh so yeah. you can really have fun thinking of different ways to experiment with this and mm -hmm. this recipe is actually a recipe of your grandmother's did you right tell us? right my grandmother had this and then she handed it down to my mom and uh, it's always been in the family mm -hmm. and every time I make the bread for people they just love it and so that's kind of what gave the idea of t to sell the bread each one of the bags makes about how many of the Indian tacos or mm. how many of the whole pieces Very together good. ten ten mm -hmm. and you're going to get three of the bags they're one and a half pound mm. bags of the fry really bread light. mix very, mm. very, very light, very flavorful, doesn't really need anything on it at all. I mean, even mm -hmm. if you wanted to serve it in place of rice or in place of bread mm -hmm. or in place of a cornbread. You could do pizza sauce on here. That would and be make yummy. like a little kind of like a, 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 a mobile style yeah. pizza. Yeah. Yeah. So it's would, so great. But even just powdered like sugar, it reminds me of a little bit of like funnel cakes Indian and things taco. that you find. Mm. It's very, Actually. very good. I even love the way that you package the soup yep. bread mixes. These are nice little bags that you can keep out on the counter. Now, do we need to, once we've opened these, refrigerate? No. Or can we leave them out? You can leave them out. Or even just put them in a canister. Right, and if the shelf life on it is one year. Lisa, I'm going to let you finish up making your Indian taco, and I think we're going to check out with Paul Kelly, who is out, I think, roaming the crowds once again. <laughs> well, not roaming so much as just kind of, uh, kind of sitting. What's your name, please? Chelsea. <laughs> and Chelsea, you just ate a piece of, of the, the fry bread. How was it? Okay. Was okay. What's your name, sir? Cliff. Cliff what? Brian. <laughs> and and uh, are you? Do you know anybody here? Uh, no. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think our guest up here. Cliff, you're, you're, you're not getting the idea that. here. Um, <laughs> 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 who's that up there on stage? 
My mom? Yeah, that's your mom. Because <laughs> Cliff was handing out the fry bread for mom, see? Um, so he's doing a great job down here, even if he doesn't know you anymore. <laughs> does he, he eat a lot, does does he eat a lot of the Indian oh, yeah. tacos yeah. and the, the soup fry bread at home? Yeah. So you put the meat and the beans and then just your yep. lettuce and cheese just to it. So do you, do you eat it open like that? Yep, you just, and the last thing that you'd probably want to put on is like your sour cream and salsa, mm -hmm. guacamole. Mm -hmm. Very yummy, sure. <laughs> Tomatoes, a little bit of sour cream. <laughs> it's a com community effort here. <laughs> well, it's very, very light, very delicious, a nice variety meal. You didn't and think for a arrived. minute, did you? He was going to forget us up no here. Way. And I know what you're going to say, uh, Dad. Dad. <laughs> And I don't usually twice, but uh, Dad, buy this. It's great. It's so unusual, and it was something that I don't think Judy had. You ever heard of it before? No. The fry, the soup fry bread. So and it was so interesting too. When we were coming back down yesterday, Jill yes. and I from Mount Rushmore, as we were driving through the little towns to Rapid City, suddenly we started seeing signs everywhere for Indian tacos. Mm -hmm. So we we had to come and find out exactly what one was, and oh, now how yeah. easy it is to make. I want to yeah. ask Brent something. Brent is our cameraman, and uh, he's over there. He's the guy who's been shooting the close-up shots mm -hmm. here. And when we were doing some, uh, some shooting in the Badlands, we stopped in Interior, and oh, okay. Brent had his first, his first uh, taco, and he just went completely out of his mind about it. He's been looking for it. <laughs> He's yeah, there he is. He's going, up. okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is so nice, too, that it's packaged in three of these so that you can maybe keep one for yourself, and if you have guests come over and they say, oh, what is this? I love it. Then you can even present one as a gift. Here, take it home, and you can mm -hmm. try it yourself. Or so. even take it when you go to someone's house for dinner because the recipe is right on the right back. On the, you All just you add have water. to do is add water. For when you mm -hmm. go on camping, even. Mm -hmm. If you camp, you can fry this up over an open campfire if you want to. You can take it with you when you go traveling in your RV. RV, it's something that will travel very well, and anything that is just add water, put it in a pan, even on I'm a boat. Over that. You know, when people travel yeah, overnight a on a boat, idea. you could also take it because you can do Be it fun. over the stove. Mm -hmm. This is already over halfway sold out. So if you're if you'd like to try it and learn what an Indian taco is, try something <laughs> for variety at your house. These are three of the one and a half pound bags. Smells They're thirteen dollars and fifty cents for the whole set, not per bag. And the item number is L one one zero one four. The Sioux Fry Bread Mix is what it's called, and it's a nice way even to treat your friends to something different. Come up with some of your own ideas mm -hmm. and your own recipes to add as different ingredients Just once an, you've fried it up. Just an idea, a little green onion in the bottom of, of a pan, and a little ground sausage, and then throw some eggs in, scramble it, and serve it for breakfast with cheese mm -hmm. on top. That's a nice place of omelet for oh, sure. Breakfast on top tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so stay on the line if you're dialing well, in for the Sioux Fry Bread Mixes. You. Lisa Little thank you for bringing yep, thank such a great you. product to Thank you. Nice to have you with us. I love the outfit, too. <laughs> <laughs> Still available, we do also have, from our 50 and 50 tour, just a handcrafted doily candle in blueberry blue for $17.79, L11591. And also still available, the Dreamcatcher pin with the decorative cedar box, so very pretty. And the box is gorgeous, and the whole idea behind the Dreamcatcher is so special and certainly indicative to Native American culture. $34.50 your price, L11370. I'm going to take a real quick break, and Judy Cole will be back with you in just a moment. Originally, it was Deadwood Gulch. Its reputation was the equal of Dodge City or Tombstone as one of the wildest settlements in the West a haven for gamblers and gunslingers. Even today, Deadwood's history is alive in places like the old Franklin Hotel, the Green Door, and Saloon Number 10. It was in Saloon Number 10, in fact, that one of the West's greatest legends, Wild Bill Hickok, met his end, and another, the Dead Man's Hand, was simultaneously created. It was to be just a friendly poker game. Okay. Rest in peace, Wild Bill. Uh, you too, Jay. Calamity, I'm sure, is what he meant. Welcome back into our 50 and 50 tour from South Dakota. Deadwood, by the way, is a wonderful place to visit, just a little bit uh, northwest of here. We do have an update for you. Oh, remember the Sioux Fry bread that we were just fixing up all kinds of ways? It has sold out. Congratulations to Lisa Little Chief. Wonderful. You all will have a ball 
mixing and matching and having a good old time coming up with your own recipes. Well, from Sioux Falls, we have our next guest, Julie Hegstrom, who has come up with an idea that is really <laughs> terrific for people not only in South Dakota and not only in the United States, but for anybody around the world who has trouble dealing with keys, whether it's car keys, whether it's house keys, locker keys, you name it. If you have trouble turning those little keys and you need extra help and you don't have another hand, the gripper is almost like a third hand. This is L11100, and it's a set of two key grippers. And Julie, welcome to our 50 and 50 tour. Thank you. Very nice I'm to have you on board, here. and Thank congratulations you to you. Why did you come up with this idea in the first place? I've had rheumatoid arthritis for about uh, 22 years and one of the most important factors when you have any kind of a disability is that you maintain your independence. So when I traded cars the last time, I test drove it in the morning when I was fresh, I wasn't tired, and I had enough strength to turn my car on. Then at the end of the day when I went out at 6 o'clock, um, I was tired, I'd lost my strength, and I couldn't turn my car on. So I thought, well, they might think it's strange that I take my car back. So I thought, well, I have to develop something then that will help me do that. So uh, with my uncle, we uh, developed our first model, which was made out of copper, and it just had a slot in the middle. And then we had some hand-carved wooden ones. And uh, those were too expensive and uh, didn't work well. So then we came up with the current model. And uh, this isn't only for people who have arthritis, but it's for someone that might have carpal tunnel, someone that might have MS, or someone that might have a broken arm temporarily, or perhaps the aging process has taken some of your strength. And it's very important uh, that you try to save your joints when that happens. Or someone might just have a thumb disability. Mm -hmm. And turning keys, turning the ignition on, It'll even work with your boat. We made them so they float. So if you lose them overboard, you can pick it up and hopefully salvage it. Right. I'm going to ask you to do something for me, if you don't mind. Would you try to turn the key without using the key gripper for yes. me? Yes. Can you get it? No. So with your hands, you cannot turn no. that key without the key gripper. No. I'd like you to take a look at her hand, too. And this is why I think that you will be able to relate or maybe even be able to relate if, if your mother or your grandmother or grandfather has a similar problem. And my 92-year-old grandmother does. And she has very difficult times yes. because pre of crippling arthritis in her hands. So now if you'll take the key gripper and show us okay. the difference. I'm pressing, I was pressing as hard as I could. And so it goes in quite easily. Is this something that will go over, you know, the new cars now have that great big black rubber end. Will this yes, go will. over one of those Mine ends? has that heavy black end, yes. and it will go over that. Now, it was better to make them snug than loose. So if you have a little trouble, just go like this, and it will fit over most models that we have tried. Can it also be used if you have your keys already on a key ring? Yes. That's you don't have the, to take those off the key That's the unique ring? thing about our key gripper. It doesn't have to be taken apart or put back together again, which I can't do. Yeah, really and so you can use this with your existing keychain. So I have many keys on each chain, and I'm very independent because I can just carry one of these with me, and that's all I need. Whereas some models only hold one or two keys, I'd have to carry about a half a dozen of those. This is not designed to go on your key ring. This is designed yes. to be separate from your keys. From your key ring, and the other thing is, this is not designed to hold your key. Let me emphasize that. It's not designed to hold your key. You put your key in the lock, in the ignition, in your door, put this over it, and turn it. Uh, some of the advantages of this, of course, it was made to give you leverage. But it's lightweight. The handle is long enough to give you leverage. I love the fact that even in a hotel room, yes. you could use this, or on a front door, if you're bolting your door, you could use this, and there are two of them, so that you could keep them Correct. with you, one with you when you're traveling. And one in the car. And one, either one with you when you're traveling in the car, or, and leave one at home so that you could keep it locked or bolt the door, Correct. or keep one with you so that when you're traveling and staying in a hotel room or in someone else's house and you just wanted to lock the door, you could. Right. And it just makes it so easy. It's not designed to be manipulated so you open and close it. It's very lightweight. It also floats. 
It also has a key ring on it itself for possibly just carrying on a belt buckle, or you could open it up and put it on your belt loop, and then you could just move right in, open up the door, and you have easy access. Right. You receive two of these for $11.64. And it is a nice idea, too, just for because gifts. as a gift, exactly. Stocking stuffers, Christmas will be coming. Everybody's looking for special things that they can give to uncles and granddads and fathers, even a Father's Day present to a dad yes. who has trouble with keys. Yes. Or he has, uh, he has trouble just turning the engine on once in a while. Correct. Is this designed to get into small spaces right next to the steering wheel? Well, yes. Next to the chamber? Uh, I was in a car accident, and so I had to use a loaner, and the key was uh, in the dash instead of on the steering column. So when I went like this, I couldn't turn it on, so I had to start up here okay. and go around this way. Uh -huh. So, you know, be creative. Uh, use your own head uh, as to how you're going to use this, but it will work. I would even think that every once in a while, if someone were to have, for instance, a can opener, and the can opener yes. side was small enough that they would be able to slide yes. this over the can opener and get extra leverage Correct. aside from that so teeny difficult. little knob. And it does. It's mm -hmm. very difficult for people who do have trouble with right. their dexterity. And then there are some other uses. If you have a washer and dryer oh, yes. with a round knob with a bar across it, Just or if that's like the way your here. stove is, you can open those the same way. Mm -hmm. Or if you have an air conditioner with a knob with a bar across it that you need to turn on and you need that special leverage. Then I take the other end, the round end, the handle, and it's the only way I can get out of my seat belt. <laughs> it's like I can't rotate my arm to press it on the side, so I just give it a poke with that, or the ones that are on top, just poke it down and get out of your seat belt, and then I also use it to push elevator buttons so I can try to save what joints I have left. You've really come up with all kinds of terrific uses. It's a nice size, it's about five inches long, it's very lightweight, you can put it in your pocket, slide it in your pocketbook, briefcase, you name it. It'll even go right next to your sunglasses in the glove compartment Correct. if you wanted to keep it there. And it will hang on your steering column. Very nice, mm -hmm. and over 700 of them have been ordered, so you've got a great product and a good idea, and we thank you very thank much you very for coming much. in. Glad for the opportunity. Stay on the line if you're interested in the set of two key grippers for 1164, they're L11100. And here's another update for you. We've also sold out now of the handcrafted doily candles that Jill presented. L11591 has now also sold out in the blueberry color. Oh, and here's another update. Wow. The Dreamcatcher pin with the decorator leaves, $34.50. L11370 also out of here. Can I slide in here, guys? Oh, it's so nice. What's your name, sir? I'm Chuck Knowlton. And yours? Del Beck. And yours? Jim Hutchison. And yours? Pete Anderson. And you are collectively? Dakota West. Thank you for being with us, gentlemen. You guys do a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Dakota West. Let's go back over. Thank you, Paul. It was kind of like the old Sesame Streets, where it was one of these guys is not like the others. That was kind of what we just had with Paul over there, I think. <laughs> Love you, buddy. <laughs> It was the best. It was the best. <laughs> well, welcome back again. And we have a great product for you. In fact, I think this is already over half gone, and we haven't even had a chance to get to it. But now we will, along with the maker of this beautiful pheasant wreath, Tracy Vod. Nice to have you with us Thank on QVC. Congratulations Thanks. for being part of our tour. This is the pheasant feather wreath. Try and say that five times fast. <laughs> I'll do it just once. L10998 is your item number here, and this is priced at $51.74. Let's go from start to finish, Tracy. Mm -hmm. How do these wreaths begin? Well, you start out with a straw wreath form, mm -hmm. and we go through, and each one has to be pine cone. So to do this order, I think we did 15,000 pine cones. Oh, my goodness. Each one has to be glued on. Then mm -hmm. you go back and you moss it all. Mm -hmm. Then you start with the pheasants, and you try and piece them on. So
so that they look natural the way the, the, the way that they do on a bird. I'm going to um, turn this around just so that the camera can see the back of it right. here, Tracy, so everybody can see that, again, it starts with the straw wreath back, right. and then you have all the peat moss and all of the pine cones that have been individually hand glued on. Right. You even have a hanger on the back that's been installed for you yeah. so that you don't have to worry about, well, how do I hang it up? Will I have the right tools? Don't worry about it. It's already taken care of. And then it's when you turn it around to the front that you really see that beautiful bow and these feathers that have to be some of the most gorgeous feathers I've ever seen. The they colors are, are exquisite. And we should point out that each wreath is going to be unique, just as every bird and every person right. is different. So are the markings and colors on the feathers. Right. Um, the pheasant is the South Dakota state bird. Um, every wreath will have different colorings in it because mm -hmm. every bird is going to look different. I love the almost sort of like an animal print, like a leopard print or a tiger or cheetah print in some of the markings on some of these feathers. It mm -hmm. makes it very rustic. Yeah, these the birds that you'll see in the wild, well, some of them will be real light colored, some of them will be real dark colored. Um, they're all going to be real unique. So. Now how do you have to treat the feathers and lay them out perfectly so that they all lay in such a beautiful like flat and soft fluid right. motion? Before I get them they're laid flat and they are processed with a 20 mule team borax mm -hmm. which dries them out, gets all the moisture, everything out of them. Um, so when I get them it's a like a flat pelt mm -hmm. and then I go from there and remove Tracy, it. Tracy, I'm going to have to stop you because it's completely sold out. It's no, gone. Sorry. It's yeah. wonderful. Congratulations. Yeah. And enjoy this beautiful wreath. It's a very, very special gift. And we knew it was going to be a good seller because it was very popular before we ever got to it. So thank you very much for your phone calls on there. We are going to take a real quick break. We still have m many more products to bring you from South Dakota. So I hope you come on back. have to order items only when they appear on the screen? With QVC, you can order any item at any time of the day or night, not just when the item's on the air. Place an order in the morning for an item you saw last night or videotape a program and call us later. Simply have the item number ready and so long as supplies are available, we'll take your order, just like we always do. It's that easy. Shopping when it's convenient for you. Just another reason why smart shoppers shop with QVC. This Father's Day, give Dad something you know he'll love. Give him a gift from our four-hour craftsman workshop. We have a huge four-hour selection of all Dad's favorite craftsman tools, all guaranteed to stand the test of time. Tools so rugged, they've been named the official tools of IndyCar Racing. It's four hours of the most trusted name and tools, just in time for Father's Day gift-giving. Don't miss our craftsman workshop this Tuesday evening beginning at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on QVC. This Memorial Day, join Judy Crow live via the QVC Local as she presents one of the most popular pieces of Black Hills gold jewelry at the foot of Mount Rushmore in South Dakota. J24815 is this S Curl Link Bracelet. This 7 and 3 quarter inch bracelet is decorated in alternating pink and green 12 karat gold grape leaves over 10 karat gold S-shaped curls. It's a dynamic look in gold jewelry, and it's made right here in the U.S. of A. It sold out completely both times presented and is returning for the same introductory price of just $149.88. Make this national holiday one to remember. Join us for our two-hour Black Hills Gold Memorial Day special with guest Jim Whitaker this Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern on QVC. Father's Day is June 18th, and this Saturday, 
QVC brings you 24 hours of gifts for that man who has everything. For the sportsman to the handyman to the busy executive, you'll find hour after hour of gift ideas for your dad. From electronics to sports collectibles to jewelry and much more. Yes, we even have ties. So if dad's got you stumped again this year, tune in. You can't go wrong with a gift from the heart and from QVC. Don't miss our all-day Father's Day shopping event this Saturday right here on QVC. And who are those presidents? Washington, Jefferson, Roosevelt, and Lincoln. We welcome you back to our South Dakota 50 and 50 tour on our quest for America's best. <laughs> we have one more hour to go of this terrific show. And of course, as we remember all of the men and women who have served our country on this Memorial Day, we couldn't have picked a more appropriate spot to bring you our Memorial Day broadcast from Mount Rushmore in the western portion of South Dakota. Our very next guest, hails from Hot Springs, and her name is Wanda Morgan, and it's so nice to have you Hi, on the Judy. show. Congratulations on Thank winning you. our 50 and 50 tour Thank program. You. Well, we're going to bring something now that is one of a kind, and these, I must warn you, we only have a hundred of them, only a hundred for the whole show. So let's talk a little bit about it, and let me give you the information. It's L11844, and it's called the American Bison Leather Briefcase with the Shoulder Strap. It's $231, and it's designed with both men and women in mind. It is absolutely gorgeous. And we were talking, Wanda and I, about the bison that roam the Black Hills of South Dakota, and there are hundreds of thousands of them. It's not an endangered species, is it? No, Judy, it's not. And uh, most of them are raised right here in South Dakota. Mm -hmm. So that's a good part. How long have you been making goodies out of bison leather? Well, not too long. We, uh, we do make... Um, luggage out of Cordura and uh, we had also made it out of cowhide but then uh, a friend of ours a rancher that's local here in South Dakota showed us this buffalo he raises buffalo and and he showed us this buffalo and so we fell in love with it and as you can see it is a gorgeous piece of leather I should point out also that no two are of course going to be exactly alike so some of the little markings some of the little marrings are much like our own fingerprints being individual yes, one right. from the next I call them beauty marks but they are from uh, the buffalo they kind of like to be uh, king of the whatever and of the black hills yeah right <laughs> and so they kind of uh, you know, uh, scuff up each other every mm -hmm. now and then, and that's that's where the scuffs come from. But when you see those scuffs, you s you know that that's a beauty mark. As for the way that they're made, this is the a denny or nylon on the inside. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they're all fully lined, and of course, there's the made in the USA symbol, and also it says Morgan's on the side, so that you know that it is from the Morgan Company here in the Black Hills. There are two pockets, one on one side and one on the other, and they're the full length of the briefcase. So it's easy to slide papers in there, legal size papers. If you wanted to carry this to the office, plenty of room for extra shoes, right. a cosmetics bag, or paperwork that you might need to carry. But it's also a nice little travel-on bag because it can fit right under the mm -hmm. seat in front of you if yeah. you're traveling on the right. plane or on the train. Beautifully made. Is it all hand-assembled? Well, it is sewn with the machine here, mm -hmm. but... The uh, beautiful part is the hand tooling here. It is not a stamp. It's all hand tooled with different types of uh, stamps. So someone sits and hand tools each one of yes. these pieces that go on the front and yes. on the back of it. And then the Morgan symbol is also engraved right into the right side. Into the side. Very sturdy too. Will this hold a lot of weight? Does it wear oh, well over yes, time, Yes, yes. The buffalo leather is extremely durable because of the long fibers that intertwine. Uh, cowhide, it just kind of lays like this, but the buffalo, um, the 
fibers intertwine, mm -hmm. and so it makes it a very durable leather, but yet very beautiful and soft. It is. That's oh, one of the just, first things you notice. Soft it's so your face. soft and so pliable. These are already <laughs> over halfway sold out. So we have fewer than four dozen of these remaining right now. If you are thinking ahead to Father's Day or possibly as a graduation right. present, it what would be ideal. Right, and it would also be so distinct and unique, and it would be something that would last the person who received it a lifetime. Oh, Leather yes. bags like this, and a style that will never go out of fashion. And Judy, the more they use it, the more beautiful it gets. It's you, just great. Wanda, do you recommend them cleaning or um, conserving the leather with any particular polish Not or really. solution? Not really. No. If, if they find uh, some kind of leather uh, cleaner that they want to use on it, it will not hurt it. But it will not need it. Okay. You know, and water or uh, sprinkles of rain will not um, injure the leather. Just let it sit out to dry mm -hmm. if it happens yeah. to get wet. The straps are removable, as you noticed, and it's a very easy removable strap. You don't have to get in there and break your nail. You just have to push down and release. And then it also is reinforced up at the top. We have now fewer than a third of them remaining, so we have about two dozen of these left. I'd love to show the way that it all begins, if you don't mind. Let's take a look at this leather right here. This is bison leather. And you can see that this is the way that it begins. Now from here, it's treated, of course, and then you have to cut it out. Is there very much waste, Wanda, when you're making these bags? Not really. Uh, not when you can use the beauty marks, is what I call it, mm -hmm. in the leather. And you notice, even as you're looking They've here, they just got so much they character. They have that's, some beauty marks that's what on them. Is well, congratulations, they've sold out, madam. Oh, well, they're thank gone. You. <laughs> <laughs> yay, yay. <laughs> and enjoy your new purchase. Oh, right. The bison bags have just sold out. Well, thank you. You're Judy. very, very welcome. We do still have available in our 50 and 50 tour from South Dakota, but a fewer than a third of our original quantities remain of these two. The baby loin back ribs and oven roasted pork barbecue set, 57.50, and it's L15628. Delicious. Fewer than a half of the coins, the giant replica coins depicting the penny and the nickel, $31.08 a piece, L11778, fewer than half of our quantities of those as well. Paul Kelly, what you doing out in the crowd? What we're doing is taking advantage of serendipity here, Judy. Um, we are in the Black Hills of South Dakota, and the Black Hills are only euphemistically hills. They are mountains, and mountains are mountain people are the same wonderful people everywhere you go. And it just so happened that we had a visitor from Switzerland who is here in the United States touring around. Wie heißen Sie, mein Herr? Riesi. Riesi. This is Riesi, and he is from Switzerland. And um, his one of his jobs in Switzerland is to uh, play the famous Swiss mountain horn. So would you please, sir? You never know what you're going to find in the Black Hills of South Dakota, and you won't believe what we found when we came here. <laughs> Mary and Dick Onstead are our next special guests. Very nice to have hi, you on the show. Thank hi, you. hi, Welcome Dick. to South Dakota. Thank you. It's great to be here in the Black Hills. The product that they have brought may make you chuckle, but listen to the presentation, and I think you'll find that you could really use a set of these. These are called toilet seat lifters, and I want to show you how you use them. Once you attach them to your toilet seat, you never have to touch the toilet seat. You just lift up, and voila, there it is. And then when you want to set it back down again, you just use the disc that's attached to the bottom to close it back down. So for sanitary reasons, for hygiene reasons, it makes a lot of sense. Here's the information. $17.12 is the price for two of them. This is what they look like right here. The item number is L11029, and you will receive two of them. Let's talk to Dick about what hit him in the middle of the night that made him invent these toilet seat lifters. <laughs> Shall we? <All> right. <laughs> what were you thinking anyway, Dick? <laughs> well, I'll give you the unofficial version was a scream in the night from the bathroom. And, We've uh, all heard that, right? <laughs> Somebody fell in. <laughs> I realized I hadn't put the, the uh, seat down and it was Mary screaming. Uh, yeah, <laughs> cold porcelain, I think. Uh, 
the official version is we, we gave this uh, product a motto of uh, a new shape for better health. And um, uh, the way it actually happened that I was, I couldn't sleep one evening. We had a, a bath off of our bedroom and I was looking in and looking at the John and I said, why don't these things have handles? Everything else has handles, frying pans, anything that's dangerous has handles. Why don't John seats have handles? I got up at three in the morning, made the design and, and, and carried it out from there. Because the only way that you can raise or lower a seat is you're gonna, people say, well, I don't touch the bottom of the seat, I pinch it, you know. But you do have to put your hands on what could be a, a contaminated surface of a seat. So we're, we're talking serious health problems here, to raise it or even to lower it. You know, also, so, little children get their hands on there. Oh, They're being yeah. taught to use the potty, and they go up and they lift up the whole seat, and their Absolutely. hands just ride all over the back of it. Their hands are gonna go all the way up over here sure. to raise it. Now they can use the tab to raise and lower the toilet seat. They don't have to touch the infection contaminants that could be underneath the toilet seat. This would be such a nice item, not only for your home, but also for nursing homes oh, and yeah. for any nursing kind of homes. area where there are a lot of people and the public Correct. is using the toilet seat. Correct. And also that reminds me of nursing homes, it, possibly the right. elderly, who are oh, also yes. having trouble lifting yeah. it up and having to use their hands. This gives you nice leverage That's and it's right. far enough away from the toilet seat and also clear so you can see it but you see down right you can, not right. You can see it's, it's optically clear you can see what you're touching as far as the elderly anybody who has difficulty grasping mm -hmm. arthritis uh, uh, people with arthritis older people or is it uh, we easy have to a friend that had a stroke um, so. couldn't use the right side of his hand oh. and found it to be a real blessing so and he probably he found that he needed right. help in when he that's had right. to he go couldn't, that's right he, he couldn't, couldn't do it himself task yep so himself. now he could do it all on his own exactly. just by having is this right. easy to attach and does it go on any type of toilet seat because some have porcelain some are done in a yeah. hardwood we haven't had we haven't found any seats that it won't go on Let me show um, how it does attach on the bottom we did on a porcelain seat if you have a real hard and there's not many porcelain seats pure porcelain seats around anymore but to uh, install the tab, these are installed with three stainless steel screws. And the reason we use the screws is, and somebody said, well, why didn't you use a double-sided adhesive pad? And the reason we didn't do that is if you put a double-sided adhesive pad here, the contaminants that you're trying to avoid, these infectious contaminants catch around the edges of the tab, and we tried even with a toothbrush, you can't get them off. Somebody said, why don't you use uh, a glue? And we worked with 3M, we came up with a nice glue, but we had the same problems. With a tab, you just loosen the two screws, uh, take these two out, loosen this one, pivot it, clean under it, put it back in, and it's ready to go again. It's also made of a nice sturdy Lexan. Yeah, what are General Electric's other? Lexan, which is about the highest quality polycarbonate that's uh, available. Did you ever have anybody in the sanitation business take a look at this and give you an opinion about it? We took this to what I think is probably the nation's leading uh, infectious disease expert uh, or epidemiologist, and uh, he didn't want to see me. He said, uh, well, I don't do this sort of thing. I don't give endorsements, and, and I kept hassling him. He says, okay, $100, 15 minutes, come on down and see me. He sat me with, with me for an hour and a half, and he says, not will I only write you a, record, uh, a letter of recommendation, but he listed all the diseases, viral, bacterial, We don't think protozoans. of those. Uh, you know, those we just yeah. don't, you think, don't think, think of that And you think, well, I'm, wash I'm washing my hands, but how many people are in too much of a hurry and leave without washing their right. hands, yeah. whether it's at home or away in a public That's place? Right. That's correct. So if you don't have to touch it, don't. Just lift it up with a toilet seat lifter. You know what's going to happen? People are going to put these in their home, or they're going to put these in a nursing home or a daycare center, or even an at-home daycare center. Right. Children are going to learn to use them. You learn to use them. You go to a place that doesn't have them, and you think, oh, where's the toilet seat? You're like going to miss it. <laughs> You're going to want to, you want exactly to know right. where is the tab. Uh -huh. yep. It's probably also a great way to get people in the habit of putting the toilet seat back down. You know yeah, what I mean? Because there are right. a lot of people yep. who just kind of forget. Yeah. And uh, not no, no po fingers pointed at you, Dick, or the mail, of anyone in the mail. <laughs> no, 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 I, I never <laughs> leave it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, after she fell in, you, you probably learned quickly. But even if he does leave it up, I'm not afraid to put it back down because right. I use the tab. Right. You get two of these. They're called the toilet seat lifters. The item number is L11029. You get two of them for $17.12. There's also a little instruction manual. A new shape for better health is also another way to describe it. And the idea is once you install them, they're there for good. 
They're also easy to take a Phillips head screwdriver, unscrew to clean underneath them if and when you need to. Even the way that they're designed for how far they come out from the toilet seat and how far they drop down was all a part of the research and development That's of correct. making them. Keep the infectious materials away from the surface that you're touching. Right. Well, over okay. 300 of these sets have been ordered, so we congratulate you on Thank your you success, on Thank your ingenious you. idea. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, Judy. Good luck with okay. the, the rest of your production. Thank you very Thank much. You. You're welcome. Thank you, everyone. L11029 is the item number, and it is a great idea. Give us a call if you'd like to try these. The set of two for $17. The Lakota Horse Dance Stick, which we presented in the very first hour. Remember, Marcus Rud... Um, uh, oh, dear. Here I was. It was right on the tip of my tongue. One... Rumia, Rum, Rubadu, that's it. Thank you, Marcus. I'm glad you're still here. L11599. He has a delightful store in Rapid City. If you ever get a chance to visit, you must stop by. It's right on the corner of Main Street and 6th. It's $157 for the Lakota Horse Dance Stick if you don't get a chance to visit the Black Hills. We have one for you. Also still available, the set of five hair hookup hair accessories, $19.84, L12030. You do receive five colors, including gold, silver, red, white, and black. When Korchak Jolkowski accepted the invitation of Lakota Chief Henry Standing Bear and came to the Black Hills in 1947, he did so with a vision of Crazy Horse already emerging in his mind. It was to be the work of a lifetime, in fact, several lifetimes and the largest statue ever sculpted, a giant monument to a giant Native American figure. Today, nearly 50 years after its commencement, and nearly 15 years after Korchak's death, the work continues, and the figure has finally begun to emerge from its stony shackles. The face, now due to be completed in 1998, is a full nine stories high. When finished, the complete figure will rise 583 feet, and runs 641 feet back from the horse's head. Beyond the monument to Crazy Horse in particular, and to Native America in general, the mountain is a testament to the human spirit and to the genius and vision of one of 20th century America's greatest artists, Korchak Julkowski. We still have a very enthusiastic crowd here as we are at the base of Mount Rushmore, and I understand that the Crazy Horse Monument was one of the favorites of our crew. They really were very impressed and enjoyed that. I haven't had a chance to see it yet, but Tuesday, I'll be there on Tuesday. I can't wait. We're going to continue as we introduce you to wonderful merchants and vendors and artists across the state of South Dakota, and it's my great pleasure to introduce you to Barbara Larson. Welcome Hi. to QVC. It's nice to have you here. Thank you, Jill. And, and Barbara really has a very special and unique product. Now, not only for those of you who appreciate art in any sense of the form, but for those of you that have any kind of roots, I think, to the Midwest, um, mm -hmm. you have farming in your heritage, I really think that you're going to enjoy what Barbara has brought to you. You have a choice of prints, and the item number is L11832. They're a choice of centennial farming prints, and you can either choose four prints, we'll show them all to you, unframed, where you'll get all four, or as we go through and show you the four prints, if you have a particular favorite that really speaks to you, we have all of the prints available framed, your choice of a framed print for $45. So all four unframed for $45 or your favorite one framed for $45. Hope that makes sense. Let's go through and show each and every one of the different prints, Barbara, mm -hmm. and the history behind all of it. Why did you create these in the first place? Well, our local newspaper, the Huron Plainsman, was approaching its centennial, and at that time, um, they asked me if I'd create or paint a series of four that would depict basically each 25-year period of the last 100 years in our history. And in attempting to decide how I would portray that portion of our history, I fell back to my own family roots, which incidentally um, is most of the way our section of the country was settled. And so I started uh, researching and found a black and white photograph of my grandmother and um, my uncle is also in this picture. Which is the one you're seeing right here on your screen. This is blue skies over the Dakota Prairie. Yes, and in this image it's very typical of how uh, the South Dakota, North Dakota, the whole Central Plains states basically were settled. And that is that people moved out, they lived in whatever they could find, whatever was available, and that's how uh, they homesteaded. And for my family, my grandfather um, 
procured a cook shack from a road crew and they cooked in the shack and they lived in the tent and um, these two domiciles are shown in this particular uh, image and my uh, uncle was young at this time and um, also I had two aunts that were just a toddler and a baby and if you look inside the tent you can see the crib with the kerosene lamp and a little top in there and also um, there's a small glass that has some kind of wilted prairie flowers in them and always when the, when they settled in this area of the United States the first thing they do is they would drill a, a water well because water was so terribly important to everybody who was homesteading you can see the well in the background behind the cook shack now one thing I really wanted to portray in this picture was the strength of my grandmother uh, my grandfather or took the photograph but I was so impressed with the determined look on her face um, they had moved from everything that they knew and loved and and here she was in, in the prairie with three young children and he was out breaking the sod and, and she was there trying to create a home longing for the home that she had left but determined to make a new life and we want to point out too mm -hmm. that on the back of each of your framed prints you will have the story of each and every one of the prints itself which That's I think correct. is great so mm -hmm. it's wonderful to hear Barbara talk about our family history but you might forget something so here it is all for you so that you can read and remember yeah. along with Barbara's beautiful artwork now let's move on to the is it the Prairie Dust Bowl that's next in the series no the long hard days the long hard days of harvest mm -hmm. okay let's go ahead and talk about that one real briefly just give us a okay. little bit of the history of this one this would be in the early 1900s and this is how the harvesting was done um, you'd have one gentleman driving the tractor and then a lot of the farmers many times would come together and help each other and they'd go from farm to farm and so they would be uh, back throwing the grain onto the um, conveyor belt going into the threshing machine and then it would come out of the machine in kind of measured weights and it would go onto the horse drawn a wagon there. This was kind of fun to do because we have this threshing machine uh, back behind my father's farm. And as I was trying to figure out how these machines work, he took me out there and, um, and really explained to me how the thresher worked and, and also the fact that the belt was twisted. And I, I really tried to capture that. The belt is two different colors and as it would go over the wheel, it would change the color of the belt. And so for those of you who are really interested in authentic machinery, this is authentic machinery and the, uh, the tractor was taken from a photograph indicative of that time also. So. I think it's a great gift idea too because I know that in my own family there is a lot of farming history. My grandfather retired on a farm and yes. I was thinking you know for him mm -hmm. what a great grandfather's day gift oh, because yes. it will really yeah. take him back to a time that he's so familiar with. We're running out of time Barbara so we need to go through and talk about the last two prints. Just give me a real brief synopsis of the Dust Bowl. Okay the Prairie Dust Bowl again was uh, my parents farm and my father Ralph Braun described it to me and I would paint it from his memories and so this whole thing was done from his memories and yet I had a gentleman come up to me at an art show and say that's the Lou Braun farm isn't it and I said yes that's exactly so you uh, captured who that farm it perfectly. was right the unique thing that was shown in here is that the the tumbleweeds would blow into the fences and then the dirt from the dust bowl would blow in on top of the tumbleweeds and it would pile up on the fences and so it was a very very desolate view and for those of you whose parents lived through that there's almost no art uh, from that period and so this would be a great Father's Day present. And I just want to show you real quickly because we are out of time but don't forget that this is the more modern age. This That's is correct. called Summer Storm and this really depicts a farmer trying to get his last bit of harvest in before those big rains roll in and yes. you can even what I loved about this one was that you could tell that the clouds were just ominous and were getting ready to roll in <laughs> with that heavy springtime storm. So you can choose from the four unframed prints, all four of them in the collection from Barbara for $45, or if there was a particular one that you really liked, we have each one individually framed, one framed print for $45 as well. Barbara, thank you for your beautiful work. We want to mention too, as Barbara just reminded me, the frames are each done in a beautiful barn wood, so you can keep that in mind for your home decor. L11832 is your item number. And still available, we do have the set of four candle holder figurine displays. Over 800 of you dialed in for these. They're L10949. Remember, those are going to fit into most any size candle holder, and now you have a little decorative display to use for your Hummels, your collectibles, or any decorating you'd like to do. Set of four for $14.71.
And also still available is that beautiful handcrafted buffalo down shawl. $155 is your price. It's L15625. So very pretty, all done by hand, very warm and very unusual. Let's go now and check in with Paul Kelly. The quest for America's best hat continues. Uh, and we have some creative hatting going on here. Uh, what's your name, please? Teresa Keith. And yours, sir? Martin Keith. Uh, Martin, I understand Teresa made you do this? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately she did. <laughs> That's okay, Martin. We really appreciate it. Can you guys uh, can you guys tilt down so Brent can get a real good shot of the hats here? This is what is meant, of course, by the Quest for America's Best Hats. Uh, as creative as they can be, and as reflective of our 50-50 Quest for America's Best Tour as and your location as possible. Thank you both very much, and uh, and you owe her, uh, you owe him big time. Uh, Jude, uh, take it away. <laughs> Love those designs, Paul. Thank you very much. Jocelyn Hansen is our next guest. She's an art consultant. She also owns an art gallery, and she's come up with an idea that kind of piggybacks onto Barbara's product of buying a new picture. Welcome to QVC's. Thank you. 50 and 50 tour. Very nice to have you on the show. Thank you very much. And Jill and I love your idea. We've been talking about collecting art and the pictures that we've brought home and how when we hang them on the wall, they never stay straight, or you clean them across the top and they tilt. You've got a way to make them secure, make them even, and also make them easy to hang. That's Let me right. introduce them real quickly. The item number is L24565, and it's called the Choice of Wall Buddies. And the Wall Buddies are these things that you put inside the back of your frame, be it a wood frame or a metal frame, and the choice is between the ones that will go on wood or metal. In either case, you get a set of six, and six means a pair of six of them. They'll also hold a lot of weight, so whether you have a piece of artwork that is 90 pounds or 30 pounds or 10 pounds, it's going to hold them. Let's talk exactly about what they are and what they do to replace just a regular wire on the back of a picture frame. Well, I don't know if it bothers you, Judy, but when I walk into a room and I see these pictures askew and things like that, the first thing I want to do is run over and you know, level the picture. And sometimes when you've come home or when you've gone to work and, and, and the cleaning people have been at the office and you walk in and the office looks just beautiful, mm -hmm. but all of the pictures are crooked, you know. <laughs> um, but I, I personally, as you, as you mentioned, as an art consultant and as a gallery owner, um, I think that the presentation of artwork is just as important as the work itself. Um, it's, it projects your image, it says a lot about you and your home and things like that. And so this is a way of, of ma maintaining that the artwork is constantly level. Let's take a picture behind you, okay. right back here, bring it up, and we'll show exactly what you can do well, with Actually, these. I might just use this to begin okay. with. Um, these, as she mentioned, are the pop-in plastic wall buddies. And it's so simple to use. You just pop in the plastic right here, right there on each corner. And, and then see. we're going to show you. You can see that there's a sawtooth edge, so you've got a lot of play. And your hanger doesn't even have to be level. Um, my friend in the audience put in the, the wall that he's here, and you can see how you've got all of that room to work with. So even if the nail isn't exactly level, you can make sure that the picture is level. But once it's level, it's in place and it's there to stay. Um, the other application that I really like is, um, as you mentioned, this works for metal, uh, metal systems as well as for wood. The wood systems you do have to screw in, but okay. they're just as simple to do as, as the uh, metal ones. And for but any size picture, be it small or large, these just go in the top two corners. That's right. And then you can put a regular nail, or these actually come with the they design. They come with the nail, and these nails hold up to 40 pounds. Now, I particularly like them in the work that I do as a consultant because I like to hang a series of pieces. I think this is meant to go on the right here. Okay. Um, and so, and what I do is I use kind of a, there you go. Um, a built in level on my yardstick. So what I do is I'll measure out the distance. There's a, there's a nice system in the back of these where the middle Let's point of each wall buddy is marked. And so I measure the distance between the two and then I just use my yardstick with a built in level. Um, and once I've marked all of them, then I start hanging them. And then I can kind of adjust with my level, too, to make sure that everything's evenly spaced and absolutely level. 
Um, and then once that series is in place, it stays that way and it looks absolutely wonderful. Yeah, so they're always so, going to be even. You never always. have to adjust. Mm -hmm. Once you set those in, and even if you're not perfect in their placement of the nails, or if you're doing it by yourself and you don't have somebody putting it up where you can say, okay, a little to the left, no, no, a little to the right, right. it's uneven. <laughs> You can set them up and it kind of adjusts for you because of the sawtooth edges that allow you to move it and then it'll stay. This is also very nice if you live in an earthquake prone area. Exactly. Because the, the <laughs> artwork stays against the wall and it, it holds there and it, if there's a little bit of rumbling it won't have a tendency to come off the wall. In fact we've joked about these because they're so popular in California that we almost decided to call them California wall buddies. Really? Because with each little shape or tremor or whatever the artwork stayed in place. This so is it's the way very popular out that there. they look, too. When you get them home, if you choose the ones that go on the metal frames that snap in the back, and would you mind just showing us? Oh, can okay. we do that on yeah, the other side? Yeah, I think side, we can do it on the other in? side here. You'll get six sets. So there are actually 12 of these little wall buddies that go in the corners of the picture frame. Another thing that this allows your picture to do is to stay flush up against the wall instead of tilting forward. A lot of times when you put just from using the wire, the wall, the, the picture on the wall, it'll tend to rock forward and it doesn't sit back. These, because the nail is sitting right there on the sawtooth, stays flush right. right to the wall. And that was very easy. Just pop that just in and you're ready to right hang in. it. And what's so nice about this in comparison to wire is you know how with wire the, the pictures are always moving. And they also, I know a lot of the artists that I represent appreciate the wall buddies because they're not falling forward either like they do on the wire. They're flush against the wall and yep. you get a, an undistorted view of the artwork. So that's awfully nice And too. it doesn't really matter how large your picture is. It can be a 12 foot by 24 right. foot or it can be a little 12 inch by 6 inch mm -hmm. depending on what you're hanging. Actually on the heavier and larger pieces, especially the wall buddies that go into a metal frame, they give you added strength and support in the corners as well. So all of those framers out there. It's kind of a revolution in framing, actually. I mean, you care so much about your molding, you care so much about your mats and your framing, you need to care as much about the hanging system as you do the... Well, we thank you for the bringing the art gallery so. design and idea to thank our you. homes, and congratulations you. on your success. A reminder that all of these folks who are here in South Dakota are winners, and we have found the best of South Dakota's products to feature in our 50 and 50 tour today. The choice of the set of six wall buddy picture hangers, $17.81 to keep your pictures level, to keep them safe and secure, to keep them even. That's still available, L24565. And we also have Native American herbal teas coming up next. Those are $19.75, L11446. Also still available, the pin that Jill has been wearing today, the sterling silver feather pin. It's $37.25, and it looks so real. It's a beautiful design, about two and a half inches long. She has it right up on her collar of her denim shirt, L11642, the item number. And also still available, and you might use the wall buddies on the back of the framed teddy bear print because they, the, the person who designed the teddy bear print uses them herself, and she spoke so highly of those wall buddies. It's a limited edition of $650, $48.50. L11004 is the item number. The beautiful music in the background by the Barbershop Quartet is coming to you live from South Dakota as are we, and we'll return in a moment. Get a jazzy band to play the Memphis blues. You read about the wedding in the Newport News. About Mandy and me, my Mandy, Mandy and me, my little Mandy. Is QVC really live all the time? It's true. QVC is always live, 24 hours a day, 364 days a year. So you won't see the same presentation twice. In fact, you never know what you're going to see our program host doing, because QVC is live TV. QVC, we're always open, and we're always live on the air. One more reason smart shoppers shop QVC. This Monday, join QVC's exclusive fashion designer, Susan Graber, for the premiere of her brand new Mediterranean printed big shirt. Easy care, easy wear, this sporty design is detailed with a straight color, long button sleeves, shoulder pads, and a shirt tail hem. 
But of course, the real highlights are the brightly colored print patterns. The Mediterranean patchwork print is decorated with florals and scrolls in a pretty patchwork pattern. And the floral oasis displays a brilliant all-over floral design. Both are great looks for summer, and we have them in a full range of sizes for the QVC price of only $49.50. Brighten your summer wardrobe with a new SG Sports Printed Big Shirt, A25264, featured this Monday afternoon when Renee Ellison presents more SG Sports with Susan Graver, 4 p.m. Eastern, right here on QVC. for a graduation keepsake that will last a lifetime? Eterna Gold is a brilliant choice, and it's yours exclusively on QVC. Join us this Thursday for two hours of Eterna Gold, genuine 14 karat gold jewelry, only better. The result of years of study and science, Eterna Gold is the strongest, most scratch-resistant 14 karat gold jewelry ever created, and it's guaranteed for life. So give a gift that will shine forever. Join us for two hours of Eterna Gold this Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific, only on QVC. The Mount Rushmore Monument is probably one of the most famous symbols of America. It's known around the world, and we are here with one of the gentlemen whose job it is to take care of it and you when you come to visit. This is Ranger Mark Davison, and they have, Mark and his guys have been our hosts here. Mark, thank you very much for having us. Well, thank you very much. We're having a good time so far, and I'm, hopefully we had some nice weather to finally help out everything. Well, it's, uh, the sun has come out, and it's absolutely gorgeous here. It's warming up. It's about 70 degrees. Were you responsible for this, Mark? I think you guys were, actually. I like the way he thinks. Uh, th our thanks to you personally and to all the people here and all the people in the National Park Service. You have made this a great show, and thank you, Mark. Well, thank you. Let's go back to the stage. Well, with all of this bright, wonderful sunshine, I think, Judy, you and I deserve a glass of iced tea. What do yeah, you say? something nice and refreshing, please. All right, we'll take care of that, <laughs> along with Rich Valley, who brings us a set of six different Native American herbal teas. Judy, why don't you tell us all about it, and I'll pour us a glass. Oh, sounds good. This is item number L11446, and the price is $19.75. Basically, what you're getting are six boxes of different types of teas, with each one holding 12 different tea bags. Now, Rich, what is the whole significance of the different teas and why did you decide to bring this to QVC and also uh, our viewers? Well, this actually comes, comes from a while, a while ago when me and my brother Robin and my family, my parents and my sister Pam Thank decided you. that uh, all the other cultures, all the other nations across the world had some type of representation for their food and beverage products. We decided that since Native American herbal teas was a, an item that everybody liked so much, we decided mm. to introduce them. And, and bring them to uh, the public from a long history of, of herbal knowledge through generations and generations of, of our culture. And each one of the boxes is going to have 12 tea bags, so you're going to be getting right. to try six different flavors of tea, 12 tea bags in each box. Let's start up down at the end and talk about the Indian love tea. What kind of flavors are we going to taste in the Indian love tea? Indian love tea is really nice. How many dates am I going to get if I drink it? Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Indian love tea is a real nice tea. It's a, it's a blend of ginger, uh, white oak bark. It's a real nice mellow tea. It's a nice ginger flavor. Mm -hmm. uh, makes a real nice iced tea. It's a real nice tea to drink sometime in the evening. So all of these tea bags can be used for either your hot brew tea or you can make them as iced tea, sun tea, those kind of things. Right, and sun tea too. It's, Great. It's, it's a nice drink to have in the afternoon. Now what about good medicine? Good medicine has a, a spearmint flavor to it. It's kind of a minty flavor. Uh, it's, I really like good medicine myself. It's got a real nice taste to it. Makes a real nice iced tea, real nice sun tea. The colors, too, are beautiful, aren't they? These are some of the prettiest teas I think I've ever mm -hmm. seen. They're beautiful. How about the Chief's Delight? Chief's Delight's going to have a berry flavor. And that's what it's, we're drinking, isn't that's, it? That's what you're drinking I right really now. I really like nice this tea. a lot. Very good. A real kind of light berry flavor. Has mm -hmm. a little bit of a bite to it. Yeah, it's wonderful. Kind of has a nice, it, it has a little bit of a tart flavor to it, but it's really nice in a nice tea mm -hmm. when you add the lemon to it and the 
You can also add some honey to it. You can garnish it with, with honey or lemon. <laughs> you know, when you think about these, too, the way you have them packaged, there's also a story about each one of the teas and about the Native American culture behind the concept, the title. These would make such a nice gift to give, oh, even great. with just giving one box mm -hmm. of 12 different tea bags. Oh, yeah. So you're getting mm -hmm. really the opportunity to make 72 different glasses of tea if you like your tea strong. If you don't like it strong, you could get even more out of them. Let's talk about TP Dreams, because that's a real nice soothing before before you go to bed kind of a tea. We should point out too, real quickly, that only one of the six teas actually has caffeine, and right. that'll actually be the, the Warriors, Warriors Brew. Brew. <laughs> yeah. The Warriors Brew, which we'll get to morning. in a second, is your good good morning tea with caffeine, but the other five are caffeine free. Right. The other teas, are, all the teas are all natural, they're all caffeine free with the exception of Warriors Brew. We put caffeine into Warriors Brew because of the, we want to, for a substitute for coffee mm -hmm. and so forth, it gets you going in the morning. Yep, gets you off like a warrior. You know when you were talking about the Indian love tea, may I just read the back of one of these boxes because I think there's quite a bit of history involved with this so you get a bit of the culture as well as some delicious drinking tea. The Indian love tea says in the Indian culture when a young man fell in love with a woman, he went through certain procedures. Ah, here we go. <laughs> First he would go to her father with gifts as was the traditional way. If the father approved of the young man and consented to give his daughter to him, the young brave would start his courtship. He would use his flute to play courting songs while the woman was inside her teepee. Don't you love the romance? <laughs> Often this would go on at night. Each brave had his own songs he would play for a woman, usually a special song played only for her. If the woman liked the young man, she would prepare a special blend of tea, Indian love tea. She would then come out of her teepee to the sound of the music and offer the young brave a, a cup of tea, a sign of mutual admiration, and the rest is history. <laughs> In fact, I think one of our cameramen, Brent, I think Brent's taking a little uh, camera break. He took it too seriously. He I thinks think. he's a. Uh, he he thinks he's working hard today. I'm sure his boss back at QVC is glad to know he's uh, sipping some iced tea out here in South Dakota. <laughs> Cheers, Brent. <laughs> so we talked about the TP Dreams, which is a wonderful soothing tea, and let's talk about Victory Tea, too. The Victory Tea, like, like all the tea boxes, have different stories on, on each one of them, kind of reflecting some of the, the folklore and some of the culture so of Native good. Americans tied into with the tea itself. Victory tea is uh, an interesting tea. It, it's, it makes a real nice iced tea. It, it has a wild cherry bark in it, so you kind of get a cherry flavor, but it's a mm, natural that's the cherry. cherry color. Mm -hmm. oh, no, yeah. We have yeah. only about a third of our quantities left of these sets of teas, too. I'm going to try this one in the hot tea. In the hot tea mode. And how about the Warrior's Brew? We were talking about that as being a good right. wake me up in the morning type cup right. tea. It, Warrior's Brew is our only tea that does con contain caffeine. Mm. Uh, it has a real nice yeah, cinnamon flavor cherry. to it. Yeah, we're friends. The Warriors Brew has a real nice cinnamon flavor to it. It's a, it's a light cinnamon, so you don't you won't get tired of the cinnamon flavoring to it. Oh, yeah. Nice, that's good. And usually the I drink tea my tea with nice sugar in it. Tea. You really don't need no, it. They're you so don't. flavorful, and with the cherry flavor, has a little bit of a sweet sense to it as well. I just love the colors because so many times when you think of iced tea, it's that kind of murky brown color tea. Yeah. And I, yeah, this is the kind of tea that you want to have in a beautiful crystal clear glass mm -hmm. and see it trickling down over the ice cubes and you have that beautiful color. I mean, it's gorgeous and it's enjoyable when you have friends over in the afternoon, Absolutely. would you like it, you know, like some iced tea <laughs> and this is a beautiful way for you to present it. And it sounds mm -hmm. like there's a lot of tea drinkers out there because this is completely sold out, Rich. Oh, oh, thank, thank you so thank much. You. Congratulations. Congratulations well, thank and you cheers much. to everyone. <laughs> Enjoy your new team. Still available, we do have the Faz Tip Cake Decorating Kit. Over 900 sets of these have been ordered. Lots of folks out there who would like to be able to decorate their cakes in their own personal way and take the intimidation out of cake decorating. $19.98 is the price, and the item number is L11454. And over a thousand of the set of two key grippers have been ordered. Those were $11.64 for the set of two. L11100 is the item number. They are still available until we tell you otherwise. His name was Seth Bullock. He was the first sheriff of Deadwood, and he built the luxurious 63-room Bullock Hotel. Guests and staff alike insist that Seth is still about, still watching over business. It's the unexplained messages on guests' bills. It's the unaccounted for clouds of cigar smoke. And it's the occasional door that for some just won't remain open. Okay.
Well, I can't believe how quickly our three hours has gone by. We're getting down to the last couple of products in our stop in South Dakota. We're going to talk about something next that I know many of you know that I enjoy. Judy is also a big lover of sterling silver jewelry. We have a beautiful sterling silver pin that I know has already been popular, and we haven't had a chance to talk about it. It's the feather pin that I'm wearing, and its creator, Linda Zabo, is our next guest. Welcome to QVC. Thank you. It's very nice to have you with us. Thank you. This is a gorgeous pin, and I'm going to allow Linda to sort of take us through the different steps on how this particular pin is made. Let me tell everyone that the item number is L11642. Your price is $37.25. It's a sterling silver pin, and it's going to measure three and one eighths of an inch long and about three quarters of an inch wide. This is all jewelry that you and your husband make yourselves all completely by hand. Right. And so what would the first step be in making the feather pin itself? First, we um, start with a sheet of silver, sterling mm -hmm. silver, and this is 22 gauge silver. Mm -hmm. Right. And then mm -hmm. we have a, a punch that's made out of steel. And what we do is we slide the silver into the punch, mm -hmm. put it in a press, and it punches out one of these. And so this is this is really the silver pin in its most raw form. Right. Really, the, I mean, it's it's you see it like this, and you're thinking and this is going to become something that I want to wear, but it's right. all the finishing touches that Linda and her husband do that make this so very special. Right. So from here, where do we go? Then we go to this, and this is a, a template that my husband and I made. Mm -hmm. We do is we'll take this piece of silver, the one we punched out, mm -hmm. slide it in there, okay. hold it tight, and we'll take a scribe and scribe the little feather marks. And those will eventually be cut out? Right. So from there, you so actually we use might, this saw, I think. Right. And we'll take this saw and we'll, you know, saw it mm -hmm. and cut it out and we'll make all these little marks in it. So that's the next step. Right. <laughs> and then saw the, solder the back on, mm -hmm. the pin on the back of it, um, grind it, polish it. From yeah. this step, it looks like this. It's and this polished. is very pretty. I mean, this would be very pretty by itself. It's a brightly polished sterling silver pin. But now this is really where, as if there wasn't already enough hand craftsmanship involved, where sort of the tedious work comes into play. Right. Because from here then, Linda uses a special tool and you actually hand etch all of the details on the feather. Exactly. Can you show us how you do that? Um, I start out and just make this mark here. And mm -hmm. then I draw a line through the center Going of the feather. All the way down to center. And then and you do then all just, of the like, texturing. Yeah. Right. The just one draw thing lines like this. that Judy, I know, mentioned to me yesterday when we saw this is, is I think it was Judy, or it might have been somebody else who said, is that an actual feather that's dipped in sterling silver? Because that is how light and delicate this particular piece looks like. But all the texture that you get, all of the what look like quill marks and things on this feather are actually done by hand. So how long would you say, Linda, that it takes you from start to finish to do just one pin? One would probably take a full hour. A full hour. Yeah. I'm cutting it out, soldering, grinding, and then etching it. Is there a special significance to the feather? I know that in Native American culture it's certainly very, very important. Did that have any inspiration on this particular piece? Yeah. Native Americans use a lot of different kind of feathers. Mm -hmm. and, and the, my, myself, I like feathers. A lot of the jewelry I design is made out of feathers. Well, I know that we sell a lot of Southwestern and Northwestern Native American jewelry on QVC. And if you have purchased during one of our Southwestern shows in the past, a pair of earrings perhaps that have some feathers dangling down along with your turquoise and your coral, maybe your jasper, now you have a very pretty pin that you can wear along with that as well. I was also playing with this earlier, Linda, and I actually put it on my necklace for a while and was wearing it as a long pendant. So while although there is not a bail on the back for a chain, you can just sort of string it through the pin part right. and wear it as a long pendant, which uh -huh. I thought was kind of fun too. Yeah. I know a lot of different people too, and we saw this earlier, like their hats, especially in this part of the country. We see a lot of hats out there today. Um, this would be another great pin that you could put on a hat as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Tell us a little bit too. I know that doing jewelry full time isn't always what you and your husband have done. Why did you decide to really pursue this labor of love? My husband did it for 18, well, he has been doing it for 18 years, mm -hmm. and um, we got married three years ago, and we both decided to just get into it full time, so he quit his teaching job, and I worked for the Forest Service, and I quit, and we've just been doing it for full time for three years now. And it's, the silver is what is so popular right now. I mean, it's been called the metal of the 90s. There is nothing more brilliant and shiny and just that real 
flash, brilliant flash, than when the sun or the night light happens to hit a very pretty piece of sterling silver. It's so bright and shiny. If you have never purchased sterling silver before and you've always thought, well, it's hard to take care of, it tarnishes, that really isn't the case. And I know that at QVC we try very hard to educate you about that. The more that you wear your sterling silver, the less it's going to tarnish. It sort of naturally polishes itself. And it's just a very beautiful, brilliant piece of jewelry for you to wear, whether you have a lot of Western jewelry, whether you have none at all, but you'd like something that's unusual and different. A sterling silver pin is unusual in itself, and to find something that has all the handwork in it, as this one does, mm -hmm. is also very unusual as well. Your price is $37.25. The item number is L11642. And again, the feather pin is going to measure about three and one eighths of an inch long, and it's about three quarters of an inch wide. Linda, thank you for bringing such a beautiful piece of jewelry to QVC. Thank you. We appreciate your time, and congratulations to you. Thank you. Let's remind you about a couple of things that are still available because we still have a couple of things remaining in our Quest for America's Best, our 50-50 tour in South Dakota. Before we introduce you to our final product of our America's Quest 50 and 50 tour from South Dakota, I also want to tell you that we have another terrific show coming up later, live from Mount Rushmore, and my special guest will be the one and only Jim Whitaker. That's me. Are More you ready South for Dakota this? Product, two More hours, South Dakota yeah. product, yeah. Beautiful day for it. We haven't had any of the Black Hills jewelry on the 50 and 50 mm -hmm. tour, so saved it for two hours from now. Yes. How did things go last night with Delisa? I stayed up. Did you? <laughs> you made it through. <laughs> Well, we have the show coming up at 5 o'clock Eastern Time, which will be 2 p.m. if you're out on the West Coast here in South Dakota. Of course, it starts at 3 o'clock. Anybody in the audience who's listening right now and would like to stay for the, sh the second show, we'd love to have you. So we just want to let you know that is soon to follow, but we have one more product of our 50 and 50 tour to come. So here's Jill. Okay, let's talk about what is our last product. Like, as I was saying earlier, I can't believe that the three hours has gone by so quickly. But for those of you who are teddy bear collectors, okay, come on in, Judy. Hi. For those Hi. of you who are teddy bear collectors, you're looking to decorate a little girl's room, you just want something that's fun and lovable in your home, we'd like to introduce you to Ingrid Arlton. Nice to have you with us. Thank you. So nice to have you here. I love your friends. And oh. friends, that's right, Ingrid and friends. We should clarify that. Ingrid is an artist who created this particular print exclusively for QVC. She, you may have seen some of her work in cards before. Uh, she does wonderful teddy bear prints and we have an exclusive limited edition of only 650 in our teddy bear sleepover print. It's item number L11004. $48.50 is the price. And Ingrid, I want you to tell the story of all of the different personalities in bears <laughs> that we find in the particular mm -hmm. print. Well, as I started uh, drawing bears several years ago, the more I draw my friends, the more I get to know their personalities. And the center of attention in this particular print is Knut. He's the one that instigates a lot of trouble. This uh, particular print is called The Sleepover, and it started with memories that I had um, being tucked in underneath quilts. And I was, uh, I was allowed to use my great-grandmother's quilt, which is over 100 years old. But I thought if we put the bears there, it would, sh it would show what we used to do when we were supposed to be going to sleep, and we didn't. <laughs> so it's called the sleepover. There were nine of us kids. There are nine bears in the picture. And they're having a ball like we did when we were supposed to be sleeping. Ingrid, this is not a photograph. You actually penciled this picture. Oh, yes. And these guys posed for me. Now, Knut isn't <laughs> always real willing. He has the most personality. And he has been loved so much by my children that his nose has shown the wear, but <laughs> he doesn't care either. <laughs> Who are some of the other characters in here? Are these all buddies of Knut's? Oh, absolutely. They all live in our home <laughs> uh, in Brookings. This one is all, almost 50 years old. This belonged to my sister. And like her personality, uh, got into a lot of trouble, <laughs> hiding things, uh, sneaking around a little bit. We see his and hind end right Christy's down here in the corner. Right <laughs> 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 this one doesn't usually think of the ideas, but is definitely uh, willing to be talked into them. And when I had these in my studio posing, my husband had to hold this one down because he was so bouncy, uh, he was ready to leap. <laughs> so as uh, 
as you look more and more in here, some of my friends have recognized people they know are siblings that could fit into that picture just as easily as our bears. The size of this is 15 inches across and 13 inches from top to bottom and just one inch out from the wall. It is all fully framed. It's also double matted, so it's all ready to hang as soon as you open up the box. What was it about bears that really sort of inspired you to do some drawing? Well, I never set out to draw bears. They kind of found me. <laughs> Back in, in uh, 1988, I was asked to donate a drawing for a fundraiser for a women's domestic abuse shelter. And we had a three-year-old daughter. We were expecting another child any day. So our house was full of soft friends, and it just seemed right. Seemed appropriate. So they joined me in my studio. My daughter willingly parted with them for a while, <laughs> a while only. And then uh, the teddy bear line was born. What a lovely gift to give to someone who's expecting a newborn. That's so cute. Because it does have in the quilt both blue and pink mm -hmm. as far as the coloring goes. And then all the teddy bears are in the natural color. How long did it take you to do the original print? Well, I draw large because I don't want any mistakes. And if I draw really large, um, it takes me a long time, about 25 to 30 hours in this drawing. Wow. wow that's a and long this time. is a limited edition. We have just 650 of them. The QVC bought them all from you. You have all of them. So it's a, a great way for you. If you have a room with all your teddy bears in it, this would be a perfect print. I can even remember when I was a little girl, you know, little girls don't have little pictures and artwork around their room. It just doesn't seem like something that moms think to put in there all the time. And here's a great way for a little girl to really feel like she has her special picture, one that she gets when she's eight years old, yet when she turns 18 and goes away to college, she wants that teddy bear picture with her because it's been with her for such a long time. I just received a letter from a viewer who wanted me to see her teddy bear collection. And she had teddy bears all all over the place. She had them up on top of armoires and she had them in china hutches and she had them sitting in rocking chairs and also in little high chairs. And if you have a teddy bear or a doll collection, you could also just kind of capture that whole feeling by putting some artwork of teddy bears on the wall behind them because Absolutely. it makes that, whole, that mm -hmm. whole decor kind of come together. It's a delightful picture. It's very charming. It captures childhood tremendously. And it's not only really for children's rooms, but also for ad adults who love collecting bears. If you have any kind of a room that has a little bit of pink, a little bit of blue, it'd be fun in the kitchen. It's fun to go by and watch, and you almost want to keep your eye on them to see what they're <laughs> up to next. Have they changed? Have their positions changed? Um, or are they always back in that same position every time you walk by? It's L11004, Watch Canute. <laughs> dollars and fifty cents exclusive to QVC and a limited edition of only six hundred and fifty and as Judy mentioned it will come to you framed double matted so it's ready to hang up on the wall the minute that you get it home or go ahead and wrap it up as a wonderful gift idea and fewer than half of our quantity remains right now so as we wrap up and give you a review of the items that do still remain in the program you can stay on the line for this one L11004 the price is forty eight dollars and fifty cents it is a one of a kind you're not going to find this anyplace else in the world speaking of that review Jill and I'll run you through the products that we've had on our 50 and 50 tour that are still available, even as limited as, as they may be. And thank you, Ingrid, for spending some time with us and bringing such a cute little print for everybody to share. Thanks a lot. Okay, let's.